In today's tutorial, we're going to create a procedural camera rig to achieve this camera move using nothing but built-in tools inside of Cinema 4D. Hey there, it's Luis Miranda. As some of you may know, I was a presenter at SIGGRAPH a couple of weeks ago, and I put together an hour-long presentation breaking down my production process, but I actually had to cut some of the content to fit the runtime. So I am turning each section into smaller tutorials and including the content I cut out. And for our first tutorial, we're going to look at the camera techniques that I used in my short film, High Tech Low Life. We're going to create a procedural camera rig using Cinema 4D's built-in camera tools. It's a really powerful technique because it allows for quick adjustments and iteration without ever having to touch any PSR keyframes. All right, let's get started. Before we get started, it would help me a lot if you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so you can get notified every time I upload a new tutorial. I'm also on Instagram under LuisMiranda4D where I post a lot of renders, many of which become future tutorials. Okay, so I'm going to be breaking down this particular shot, namely the camera work. Because inside of Cinema 4D, there's a technique that you can do that will allow you to create a procedural camera system. One where you can just simply change a couple of angles and the system itself will then transition between all the shots while maintaining focus and also giving it a little bit of a handheld look so that it feels a little bit more organic. So let me show you guys what I mean. So I'm inside of Cinema 4D, inside a very simplified version of my project file. As you can see, I have all these layers and a ton of them are turned off. So uh, let's go ahead and check this out. So as you can see, I have the camera move already done. Uh, this is the final one that I used in inside of the short film. Uh, so it goes from the gun to her face to uh, framing the robot. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. Let's go ahead and create a new camera. And let's go ahead and drop it in. Let's hop on in here. And let's go ahead and set up our three angles. So let's just make sure our rotation is set to zero so that there isn't any sort of banking or anything unusual. So I like to use these um, compositional helpers. So you get to those right here in composition. And so as you can tell, it was already activated. I set my default camera to do that. And so I like to use this for you know composition purposes. As you can see, the golden spiral ends on the gun. And also I have the robot on one of my thirds. Cool, so let's go ahead and set that camera up. I'm gonna name this guy um, shot one. Cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this camera. I'm going to pull up and let's go ahead and frame this lady. So something like this. And normally I have something in the background uh, to kind of like balance the scene, but we should, we're just going to pretend it's there. So we're just going to use this third to kind of focus on her. And let's go ahead and name this one shot two. And now let's go ahead and create our shot three. And this one is gonna be just a very simple kind of frame of both of them. Actually, let's get a bit farther. Let's go ahead and move past the camera a little bit so that I can get a better angle on this. Cool, all right, so now we have camera one, camera two, and camera three. Okay, so now what we wanna do is create a morph camera. So I'm just gonna duplicate this one. I'm gonna call this one morph. Let's go ahead and set this guy as our camera and let's go ahead and drop in a morph tag. So I hit shift C to create my commander. And so now let's go ahead and type in and let's go here to camera morph. And so here you're given two options, which is the simple morph or the multi-morph. Since we're using three cameras, we're gonna need to use the multi-morph. So let's go ahead and drop in uh, shot one, shot two and shot three in that order. That way it'll go between all three shots. Cool, so you can kind of see where the system should be going. Okay, so now we're gonna to need to start keyframing this based on certain angles and um, certain actions. So here, obviously we wanna start at camera one. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit a, put a little keyframe in there. And so, yeah, so like around here, we're gonna go ahead and go to 50%, which is our position two. Let's go ahead and type that in, cool. So now we have this short move here. Nice. And then we're gonna want to, around here is where we want our camera three to come in. And so as you can tell, 
it's not really, we're, we're going to want to finesse a little bit so that it kind of hangs on certain areas. So let's go here into our curve editor. I like to use, I like having it already docked and that way it's a little easier for me to pull it up. So I'm going to drop in my morph tag in here so that we can see uh, its transition. So as you can see, it kind of starts at slow, then it sort of creates sort of like this um, arc without it ever really stopping. So let's go ahead and flatten this guy down and kind of create like a nice sort of pause before it goes on to the next. And let's go ahead and you know move this over so that everything's a little bit more equal. So yeah, it starts out, goes up, and then it swings around where the robot. I think it could probably come up a little bit sooner. Cool. And let's go ahead and grab all of them and then let's go ahead and stretch these guys out so that there's a little bit more of a curve to it. So it kind of snaps a little bit more. Cool. So, so that's kind of phase one of this. I'm going to go ahead and hide all of these other cameras so that we don't see their, their FOVs. Cool. So now what we need to do is fix this kind of wobbliness that's going on. So if you notice, there's like a lack of focus. The camera sort of just wobbles everywhere and it's not really focusing on any one thing. It's sort of just trying to get to the next position. And normally what you do is create a target tag and I could apply that to every single one of these cameras and have them, you know, have their own target. But there's actually a much easier way to do this, which allows you to work in a with a morph camera. And the way you do that is by creating a motion cam. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a motion camera. And let's go ahead and create a system. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop this guy in here. I'm gonna delete that little null that it created. And here, what we're gonna do, see, it already linked it for me, but normally what you wanna do is just drop it in here for the link. You know, inherit all the camera settings. And essentially, it's an exact duplicate of it and it'll do all of the same moves as the morph camera, except that we now have options to control um, targets. So here inside of our animation, let's go ahead and enable our targets. And what we wanna do is kind of hop out and let's go ahead and create a couple of nulls to drive the, uh, the focus. So let's go ahead and just create a null. I'm gonna call this guy target one. And let's go ahead and create two more of them. Cool, let's go ahead and put this one as two and this one as three. So in my first target, I want this one to be by the gun. Oh, and another thing that's really good is here in your display settings, if you set this to something like a circle, you, you get these really nice little uh, splines around it, which makes it a little easier to identify and also move around. So let's go ahead and just uh, keep moving it around. Let's place it towards the gun. We don't need it to be exactly on the gun. We just need it to be near it. And on target two, we're gonna place this guy over by her face. Oops, let's go ahead and get in there. Awesome. And our last one is gonna be over here where the robot kind of stops. So we have these three targets, cool. Okay, so now let's get back into our morph camera and inside of the tag, let's go into our animation and let's set these targets into the A, B, uh, A1, A2, and then B1. And so now when we play this, you can see it's kind of locked into the first one. And so now it's just focusing on target A. And so what we wanna do is go ahead and animate these to move with the transition of the morph. So when we look at here, we can, we can uh, see here at 548, let's go ahead and uh, hit position here. And then as we go up, let's go ahead and move this over to A2. And then as it swings over this way, we want this to, instead of changing the position A1 and A2, we want to actually change uh, A to B. So here, let's go ahead and set a keyframe here. And then as it swings around, let's go ahead and have a transition over. Cool. So now let's go ahead and bring in both tags in here. So now we can see where the keyframes are. 
And I try to line these up to the morph camera's uh, original keyframes. So you can see it, it's almost lined up, not quite. Let's go ahead and, and here it's only off by a frame. Cool. So now as it moves up, it is, it is moving to those individual targets. And it makes it a little easier to control your camera this way. So now all I have to do is actually adjust my targets. I don't have to adjust any sort of rotation or anything on the cameras. I just have to uh, simply slide these guys around. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. And let's go to target one. Let's go ahead and play around with our framing. Here inside of our composition, let's go ahead and activate our grid and also golden spiral. And here inside of our target, Cool, so now we can place it where we want it. So something like here. And then now inside of our second one, we can place it something like this so that you know we're giving it the composition we want. And now when we come here, let's go ahead and adjust our third so that it's a little bit more compositionally head, uh, friendly. So you know, as you can see, the golden spiral sort of ends on our head. Cool, so now when we go through all of them, we press play, they will then transition to all the different targets. And we now have something a little bit more you know, clean. Uh, it's focused, it's not wobbling all over the place. Cool, but yeah, as you can see, there's kind of this weird sort of like move here where it's sort of focusing a lot on sort of the wall. It's not really focusing on her. So here we can probably uh, adjust our keyframes a little bit. So if we adjust this guy and kind of just have it start later, we can have it swing. And so we, she's still on in the frame. And if we kind of make it a little bit more extreme, it, you can see that she's still like in this particular region of the camera without it, you know, going a little crazy. And so now it like switches to a third position and now you know, we got ourselves a pretty nice camera move. Uh, but I want to show you guys what makes this particular system really uh, flexible and really powerful. So if we go into our original shots and we make some changes, so let's go ahead and make this really wide, maybe you know, for more of a leg, so kind of a wider angle. Let's go ahead in our second shot, let's get really close, you know, something ridiculous that you probably wouldn't actually do. Uh, and then shot three, let's go ahead and maybe show a little bit more of the scene, have it maybe go really far back. So now when we go into our motion camera, you can see that all of the shots are now being updated uh, based on their new positions. Uh, but because they're using the uh, targets, uh, you're able to make these changes and they still look, um, they still kind of catch the essence of the original animation uh, because they're focusing on the targets and using those as sort of like their anchor point for all the motion that they're doing. Uh, as you can see, it transitions really nicely and it looks really cool. So I'm actually gonna switch this back to their original angles um, because I wanna show you guys another thing that you can do. So if you wanna add some of those sort of like handheld uh, looks to it here inside of your uh, motion camera, if you go inside of uh, motion, you can actually play around with these guys. So something like a dogma cam, it'll kind of add and it, introduce like noise inside of the position and rotation. Of course, you can always play around with it and kind of fine tune it to your liking so that it has a little bit of motion, but, and it's not perfectly still, you know? And that's pretty much how I do camera work for all of my projects. I'll create a similar system with all those different camera angles, uh, morph between them, and then using the motion camera, I'll use the targets to anchor you know, the focus. I feel like a lot of uh, motion designers are actually really scared to use the motion camera because it does have a lot of settings in it. But once you start figuring out how each one of those individual uh, tabs work, you can actually unlock a whole slew of uh, different possibilities. Uh, we didn't even touch on the using the spline, uh, but you know you don't even have to uh, use a motion camera. You can actually use a combination of these rigs and blend between them using multiple motion cameras. So 
Uh, yeah, so I highly recommend giving it a spin. I think it would it would definitely benefit your camera work immediately. And that's it. I hope you see the possibilities of this technique and incorporate it into your workflow. Personally, learning this technique has actually opened up all of my camera work in all of my projects and allowed me to do a lot more interesting camera moves. I want to thank everyone who joined the live stream. I actually went back and checked out all the comments as they were coming in. And I have to say, I'm really appreciative of all the kind words, both in the comments and also in my Instagram uh, for everyone who reached out via my DMs. I want to thank you guys so much. Uh, I have another tutorial coming and it's going to be more camera work. This time it's going to be my Cinderella castle render. So I'll see you guys there. All right.